And in there, I make the case about how democracy is just merely a system designed by parasites that enables rule of the competent by the incompetent, rule of the of the um, of the useful by the useless. That's what fucking democracy is. Um, it is it is literally designed to give the productive constituents of a society, the remnant, enough room to build value, to create wealth, so that it can be later extracted. Um, and it's extracted under the banner of the greater good. So, so this sort of parasitic manifestation of rule, you know, the ruler, simply a caretaker, someone who has no fucking skin in the game. He can do whatever he wants. He can make whatever decision he wants. He can rob whoever he wants. He can fuck up whatever he wants. He's in there for four years, maybe eight years, and then he moves on. There's no damage to him. I mean, every single one of these fucking politicians, they came into office with basically nothing. And they came out of office multi, 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 multi millionaire. There is absolutely nothing good about a democracy. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I actually think it's the worst form of rule because at least communism and socialism fall apart extremely quickly. Whereas democracy has the capacity to last and literally and destroy the fucking world in the process and put people into gulags while smiling that it's for the greater good. You know, so, so I think it's the most dangerous form of rule. Um, this is where I diverge heavily from, you know, people like Gladstein. Um, and this is where, when I look at the kind of people who support democracy, it is particularly either just brainwashed fucking lemmings um, or the academics, like what you mentioned in, you know, Iran and, and you know, in the, the Russian Revolution and everywhere else throughout history. It's always been these academics trying to come up with a way to leech from the value creators, to build these fake models, to, you know, to project and espouse um, platitudes that the lemmings will fucking believe in um, so that they can use numbers against the few productive people um, in order to create a system of leeching. That, that's all it is. And it's, um, it's always like, a democracy is literally proof of stake. Like literally by definition, it's fucking proof of stake. Um, and it's disgusting. I, I can't think of anything more morally repugnant. Alex. All right, we're live. We, we are alive and we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I Man. think we're alive. I don't know if this is a simulation or not. I really miss you, Alex. Um, it's been a it's while. Been we just we're off the record talking about like when was the last time we saw each other. I mean, time flies by so fast. Um, it's how are you, man? You're not in Australia, that's for sure, right? So we just want to just well, on the record, just you're not in Australia. That for sure. Um, okay. And hopefully it stays that way for for a long time to come. Um, I mean, I'm I'm doing good now. You know, there's going to be some changes to me in 2022, um, which I'm going to like restructure my life a little bit with respect to what I'm doing and where I'm putting my time. Um, if I can, if I can figure things out, um, over the next couple of weeks, then I think my life's going to move more towards, um, content creation. Um, and I may actually have an opportunity to finally, um, write a couple of the first books that I wanted to write. So, um, so yeah, let's see. There's, uh, there's been some, you know, personal sort of challenges that have popped up, um, but I'm going to try and turn them into, into opportunities. So we'll, yeah, the, the next, the next 10 days in particular is going to be uh, very important. So that'll, that'll define a lot of what happens next. Yeah. So Alex, uh, you know, both of us, I think something connects us. We were, we are both, uh, originally at least, I mean, I'm still in that in, in Austria it's and i didn't know it was so bad in australia because i listened to the corona investigative committee you know with lawyers experts and uh, all kinds of insiders and uh, i didn't know that it was so bad in australia the situation and you know we are living in a shithole right now the tyranny is in full force i mean it's this i don't know you know it's so it's so fucking surreal and dystopian and i'm not sure you know are we really run by a by a bunch of fucking criminals? Uh, and it is, it is. I mean, and that's why you know your articles, the series of articles that you are uh, also you know continuing to write on the remnant and or you know remnant Bitcoin and 
that's why I put it, you know, as a subtitle in for this episode, our last hope for humanity. It struck a chord, you know, not only with me, but probably with not many, but you know, those, <laughs> the remnants <laughs> probably. And I'm like, especially, you know, considering the circumstances we're living in, you know, we, you know, as you know, we have a child, she's 11 months old, she's going to be one year old next month in January. And, you know, we are seriously being considering where, to, where, 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 where we're going to move to, you know, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, you know, I mean, we're not that privileged or lucky, you know, just to pack our stuff and go somewhere. Uh, but um, if it's necessary, we have to, uh, maybe not now, but uh, we're going to take all kinds of legal action. As you know, there's a lot going to take effect in February. And they took that part off in the last draft, which means that uh, sort of as a, what do you call it in English, replacement custodial sentence, meaning imprisonment, instead of paying the fine. So uh, I'm talking about the mandatory vaccination. Mm, mm, mm. It is so, so fucking dystopian. I don't know what to say. What, what's your whole perspective on this whole shit? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing. You said it, the tyranny is in full force. And I think you're just wrong there because it's definitely not in full force yet. Um, I think it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. Before. Right. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for listening to my TED talk. I'm done now. <laughs> oh man, no. But it feels like it. It feels like it. I mean, you know, the pressure, the emotional pressure. That's that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's still, of course, yeah. yeah we haven't seen nothing yet. You know. So. Yeah. Uh, well, look. Unfortunately, um, you know, as I've said before. On many podcasts and on Twitter, I say that every time I think the world cannot get more ridiculous, I wake up the next morning, I open up Twitter and I'm proven wrong. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I've decided to start calling it, I just call it now the clown world simulation because um, that's what we're living in. That's the, that's the cartridge that's been put in the, in the, in the gaming console. And we're watching like, there was a there was a meme today which is um which was like a NFL meme by uh, Spint or Spint I I never know how to pronounce um his name but the meme guy and it, it's just it was hilarious so it's it's this uh, reporter with an NFL guy doing a interview socially distanced um, and then straight after the interview they hug <laughs> it's just fucking... <laughs> you're muted you're muted. Where they, they so they thought they were just they weren't life life anymore, right? No, 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 no. It's, was it, it was like for real? Just, for real? Yeah. Yeah, 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 Live. So, so you know, they they did the interview socially distanced. They finished the interview. It's like in our faces, Alex. It's like you know, look at all these. I mean, uh, you know, assholes up there. You know, they this whole this whole ritual. You know, with the fucking mask, like taking it off and putting it back on, and all when they go like visit schools or children. I mean, I mean this. You know, I mean the damages that have been. And the consequential damage is that have been caused psychologically, emotionally, not to mention economically, but, you know, in their souls, in the soul of the children. I mean, it, this is just so, I have no words for that. I don't know. Yeah, it's, um, I think what we were saying off the record just before is like, you know, our, our kids are going to be the only kids probably on the planet who, um, who are going to be fucking, I don't want to use the word normal but able to contend with the reality of another person's face. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I see, you know, in South America, for example, honestly, like this, I, I got kicked out and banned from another gym yesterday because, um, because obviously I refuse to wear a mask while I'm doing fucking squats. And the thing is like me, me and my girlfriend had a little bit of an argument because she said, look, you know, they don't care. Just wear the mask under the chin. Um, and no one really says anything, which granted they weren't saying anything, but I just snapped anyway. I, you know, the, the guy came and I, and I want to, um, I want to read what I wrote to him. Like I translated into, um, into Spanish so he could read. And it says, um, I understand you're doing your job, but you being human is more important. I'm not a sheep. I'm not a dog. I don't believe in the lies from the government. If you want to support a lie and live like a slave, that's up to you. I'm sure you're a nice person, but supporting a lie makes your behavior evil. I will not support a lie. The main question is, do you support the people and the truth or the government and its lies? And I tried to like, you know, put that in this guy's face to read. And, you know, you're like a typical sheep. He refused to fucking read it. 
and just started complaining about, you know, uh, everyone's wearing masks, so you have to wear masks. It's the, it's, you know, it's about equality. And I said, I don't give a fuck about equality. I'm not equal. I said, you're below me. Um, you're a fucking slave if you want to voluntarily wear a fucking mask. I said, how about if the rule is jump off the fucking bridge? Are you going to do it, dickhead? Um, he's like, no, 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 but that's not the rule. You know, the rule is we all have to wear masks. I'm like, no, that's a fucking dumb rule. Like, you don't fucking restrict your oxygen when you're training. Um, so anyway, at this point, like, and that sort of inspired a tweet yesterday about, um, you know, what I said, the, the enemy is not Klaus Schwab or, you know, the, the so-called parasitic elites. They're not really the enemy. Like, the, the enemy is the fucking neighbor who's wearing three masks and believing in their shit. The enemy is this fuckwit at the gym uh, act, behaving and acting as the teeth of um, you know, the, the, the mandate creators, right? Because if these fucking lemmings didn't go out and believe the dumb shit that they believe, the, 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 the politicians, the government, the statists, the maniacs, the Klaus Schwabs of the world have no fucking teeth. They have no capacity to enforce it. So I, t- I tweeted yesterday, which was basically Hitler didn't kill millions of people. It was the fucking idiots who followed his word that killed millions of people. Um, and that's the same fucking story every single time. And, you know, we've been way too apologetic to these fucking retards. We've been way too apologetic to all the lemmings who are just complying and attempting to comply their way out of tyr- uh, tyranny. They are the fucking problem. Not me. Not even the government. It is fucking them. Um, and I don't know, man. I just, I, I view these people as subhuman now. I view them as below me, you know, you know, I view them as slaves. I view them as serfs. I view them as basically less than the fucking dirt under my foot. And I hope for a day at some point where, you know, Bitcoin will be so valuable and that these fuckwits have none of it so that I can put them to use in proper slavery. Like at least the Egyptians built some fucking pyramids, you know, in today's day and age, these slaves are just petty enforcers for masks. Like when I'm fucking rich and powerful, I will put these fuckers to work and I'll hire slave masters and I'll whip them to the point where they're fucking, you know, carrying and at least building something useful. I have no remorse for these motherfuckers anymore. I genuinely want the worst for them. So anyway, that's just my rant about how I'm feeling about the world. No, you make such a good point. I've been many so good points. Um, You know, Alex, I mean, the the sad part is, um, you know, it's not only us, like, you know, you know, people are, all of us know people, uh, friends or uh, you know, uh, alleged friends, or you thought you know, they were friends, you know, yeah, yeah. or family, they're all like, I mean, the, ma- the the magnitude and the depth and the degree of mass psychosis is so insane. And there's this guy, you know, uh, what's this guy, Professor Desmond from Belgium, who, who actually is going to publish a book on the psychology of totalitarianism. And uh, he like, you know, broke it down, like, like how, how uh, mass, the mass formation evolves or mass uh, psychosis, or I don't know what you call it, mass hypnosis. What, what is it? I mean, it, psychologically, I just don't get it. You know, they're like, they think they're so intellectual, so intelligent. It's, it's always in these intellectuals. They think it's always been like in Iran, you know, when the uh, Iranian revolution, you know, started all the intellectuals, you know, they, they, they all think they are super smart and, you know, they've eaten, as we say in, in German, you know, they've eaten sort of the, the wisdom with the spoon, but I don't know what's up with these people. I mean, do you, do you understand it psychologically? Uh, the the you know this brainwashing, the indoctrination, this this you know narrow mindedness, and just I don't know. It's it's I mean, it's mind boggling. Yeah, it's um. Marx was another example, right? He was a academic fuckwit who was um, you know, had a rich family, had benefactors, and. <clears throat> didn't want to do the work. Uh, and I guess th- this is something that re- really, um, I guess, in with respect to Bitcoin, just resonates with me very deeply is the idea of proof of work, right? Is that Bitcoin is something you must earn through risk or effort. There's no other way to get it. Um, whereas if you roll your own cryptocurrency, um, if you're one of the insiders in an existing cryptocurrency, you don't need work, you just need stake. Um, to continue to enrich yourself and there's like a there's a deep fundamental disconnect with uh reality there which um 
which basically rigs the game. And the intellectuals are always looking for a way to try and outsmart reality by creating models and games in which they can control the rules and convince the lemmings, the sheep, to come into their framework so that the lemmings can operate inside their rules. And then they effectively have slaves. They have serfs because they just make up the rules. They change the rules. They do whatever they want. Now, as those models get larger and larger and larger, um, particularly if those models are able to fund themselves, like if they go and capture the mechanism through which we measure human action, you know, time, value, resources, which is money. Um, if you can call up that game and people, first of all, too stupid to understand what money is in the first place. And as a result, um, not intellectually curious enough to, to dig deeper as to what it is, then you can actually fund yourself and become large enough that that game or that model is something which we're all born into. And then you and I end up carrying the fucking game because we don't have an alternative or an opt-out. And in the past, you know, all throughout history, the opt-out or the alternative was to escape to a new land and just build. Like, you know, you, you, you realize that, you know, the monarch, the leader, the king, wh whatever he was at that point in time was a fucking idiot. And you're like, well, this game is just completely rigged. So I'm going to get the fuck out of here and go do something else. So you, you were able to leave. Today, though, we're not able to leave because the game has become so big and so interconnected and so uh, prevalent and pervasive that we're all born into this scam. And I guess, luckily, Bitcoin has emerged and it's offered us another way to opt out. And when enough, when enough resources are sucked out of the game, out of the model, um, the model ends up imploding, kind of falling in on itself anyway. Um, and and that's, that's really the battle we've got to win at this point, is not um, to try and convince the fucking lemmings that the game they're playing is a scam because they're too dumb, too stupid, too naive to ever realize it. They'll never take the glasses off. The game is to wake up enough of the remnant, you know, if we're going to tie that analogy in here, to suck their... To, to take their productive capacity out of this thing because we are the ones that are holding it fucking together. Um, and when we walk away, the whole thing fucking implodes. The parasites implode on the fucking masses and they can all go to hell, to be honest. Um, and we can go and start rebuilding from scratch. So anyway, that was, again, I've gone on off on a rant. I can't even remember what the first question is, but... Um, no, no, that's that's a good point. And, and you know, I wanted to ask you, I mean, don't you think, I mean, like, especially in these times of the pandemic, it's not a fucking pandemic, it's a pandemic. <laughs> it's been like orchestrated and planned. And but people, you know, they just think it's a fucking conspiracy theory. But okay, you know, if you don't want to look at the facts, you know, people, what can we do? You know, you, you give you give people the evidence, the facts, you know, there are investigative journalists, experts, whistleblowers, all coming out with all kinds, you know, with, with so much overwhelming evidence and factual evidence, you know, and, and, and facts and, and investigative stuff. But, you know, people just don't want to see it. But it has never become, I think, more clear than ever that the so-called democracy, you know, which people always, you know, love to uh, pontificate about is 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 like yeah, democracy is, is like ruling uh, or, or enforcing whatever sh shit, you, you know, you want to oppress people with, you know, with when we call it uh, tyranny, fascism, Orwellian, you know, technocratic, uh, transhumanist, whatever, uh, support it or, or somehow at least make the appearance of, of having the majority, the majority behind it. Right. So that's that. I think this is what I'm I think I'm concerned or we are concerned with uh, is like, how much time do we have? You know, like uh, because once there's like physical coercion, like uh, like in Austria, you know, starting February, if you don't, uh, you know, like if you don't uh, vaccinate, if you don't let let yourself inject with a experimental substance, well, you don't fucking know what's going to happen, you know, and there are people, you know, dropping dead. There are more athletes. And I mean, there's yeah. just, yeah. so much evidence out there. It's just in plain sight. What What is up with these people? I, I just I just don't get it. How much evidence, time do we have? Evidence only matters 
to someone who's got the brain capacity to fucking objectively analyze evidence. Again, the slaves, the lemmings, and the sheep will ignore evidence even when they're fucking dying in front of themselves. Like you've seen, you know, the like people that like that dad who's, you know, I've got a the the meme of it. You know, his his son had a fucking adverse reaction to the first vaccine. He's in fucking hospital and he's saying, I hope he gets better in time for the second dose. You killed your own fucking kid, you retard. Um and, and you're hoping that you know he gets better for the second dose. Or the um you know, like people, the, the, just as just as fucking stupid is like they're lined up to get the vaccine. Someone gets injected, has a fucking you know anaphylactic attack, and like the ambulance comes taking him away, and the next guy sits down to take the fucking thing as well. Like th- th- this is why I say like you know me, me and Mark Moss had a had a discussion about. I think it was Mark or someone else. They were saying like. This has to stop when people start seeing people drop dead around them. I said, no, no, no. They will fucking ignore it. They will fucking ignore it. They'll, their family members will literally die right in front of them from the vaccine, and they'll line up right next to them to take the Oh, yeah, and then they're going to say, or they always say, oh, uh, it would have been worse if, we, if, if whatever he or she mm-hmm. wasn't vaccinated. It's so, mm-hmm. it's so insane. It's, I don't know, what, what, what is this? Is this beyond cognitive dissonance? It's, there's no cognition in the first place. These people lack brain capacity. For, for there to even be cognitive dissonance, there needs to be a brain. There is no fucking brain in existence with these people. That's why. So, like, coming back to the thing about democracy, though, funny that you mention it. So my next series of articles, so, you know, I've done the Remnant series now. So the next one is going to be a three-part series about democracy and Bitcoin. Um, and it's called Bitcoin is Not Democratic. Um Bitcoin is meritocratic and there is a universal difference. And in there, I make the case about how democracy is just merely a system designed by parasites that enables rule of the competent by the incompetent, right? Rule of the, of the, um, of the useful by the useless. That's what fucking democracy is. Um, it is it is literally designed to give the productive constituents of a society, the remnant, enough room to build value, to create wealth, so that it can be later extracted, um, and it's extracted under the banner of the greater good, because if I take a dollar from one productive person and I promise five people 15 cents, for doing nothing. I just lost one vote, but I gained five. And I also pocketed the difference of 25 cents for myself. And then because the person who had one dollar, you know, he's still got another dollar left. I tell him, hey, I'll protect you from the people who want to take the rest of it. And then I'll tell these other idiots that I gave them 15 cents. I'll say, he's the reason you only have 15 cents, but he has another dollar. We should make another fucking law to take that. So, so this sort of parasitic manifestation of rule um wherein the the you know the ruler is simply a caretaker someone who has no fucking skin in the game he can do whatever he wants he can make whatever decision he wants he can rob whoever he wants he can fuck up whatever he wants he's in there for four years maybe eight years and then he moves on there's no damage to him i mean every single one of these fucking politicians they came into office with basically nothing and they came out of office multi, 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 multi multi-millionaires. There is absolutely nothing good about a democracy. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I actually think it's the worst form of rule because at least communism and socialism fall apart extremely quickly. Whereas democracy has the capacity to last and literally destroy the fucking world in the process and put people into gulags while smiling that it's for the greater good. You know, so, so I think it's the most dangerous form of rule. Um, this is where I diverge heavily from you know, people like Gladstein. Um, and this is where, when I look at the kind of people who support democracy, it is particularly either just brainwashed fucking lemmings um, or the academics like what you mentioned in you know, Iran and, and you know, in 
the the Russian Revolution and everywhere else throughout history. It's always been these academics trying to come up with a way to leech from the value creators to build these fake models to, you know, to project and espouse um, platitudes that the lemmings will fucking believe in um, so that they can use numbers against the few productive people um, in order to create a system of leeching. That, that's all it is. And it's, um, it's always like a d- democracy is literally proof of stake. Like literally by definition, it's fucking proof of stake. Um, and it's disgusting. I, I can't think of anything more morally repugnant um, than democracy. I can't think of anything more morally repugnant than the, the retard teaching the master. Or oh, sorry, ruling over the master. Exactly, like, yeah. It's, it's, like it's what, disgusting. One, it's one person, one vote. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it starts, it starts, uh, as we, you know, as you know, it starts uh, very early, you know, in probably the womb of the mother <laughs> or at least, you know, at latest, you know, it's school, this whole fucking, you know, educational like, compartmentalized system where they brainwash the people, you know, just, just, you know, just do, you know, get a degree. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, that's why, you know, I'm a total uh, advocate like, like, they, like um, Daniel Princey, uh, whom actually I, I love the interview that the talk to you, you had on, on uh, some time ago. Uh, he's also, you know, a total advocate for homeschooling. So I would yeah, never put, you know, put, I would never put put our daughter, you know, into a, some kind of brainwashing uh, uh, gulag, you know, where where she just doesn't, you know, she wouldn't learn like how to question everything. She, you know, be creative, be innovative. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so it starts there, you know, the whole brainwashing as it starts there, and then the media, of course, which is like, uh, you know, is co opted, is like an understatement. It's like totally controlled uh the academia you know the peer review you know i think the um uh, uh Namus in his new books uh, the fiat standard has done really uh, huge justice to this to this chapter about you know fiat science and fiat academia and and it's i think it's even much much better formulated than than the bitcoin standard uh, from you know comprehension uh, process mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's uh i must say i'm 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 t- totally, I mean, uh, blown away by, by, you know, the, and it reads, reads really smooth. So anyway, um, what I was going to say is that it's disgusting. It's a dictatorship. Uh, and, you know, as you said, we haven't seen nothing yet, but what I wanted to talk about, because I studied law and I remember, uh, we, we, we talked about like law, there was a, a, a sort of a subject It's called law philosophy or legal philosophy, something like that. And, and, you know, we talked about like Nazi Germany and, uh, when when the injustice or when the cruelty or whatever the horrendous things you know that are going on uh, you know in a nation state in a regime uh, reaches a certain point then you know where's the legitimacy Alex then you know then I have the right you know I, it, because freedom cannot be taken away from me it, it, it's a natural right so I, I it can't even be taken away so it is natural right so I have a a right to defend myself. I mean, if it comes really, uh, you know, um, uh, really to a serious situation where I have to defend my and and especially the physical integrity of our daughter, um, and I'm sure we're not the only ones, you know, there are at least a million, maybe two million people in Austria who are against this, this whole vaccination, at least, you know, a million people. So there's a lot of things going on, you know, um, numbers are being manipulated. They, you know, uh, there are like 300,000 people on the streets, you know, and then the media comes like, oh, they're just 40,000 people, even from the police side. It's, it's, so, it's so insane, the manipulation of data, the scientific fraud that's going on, the lies, the, the propaganda. It is, I'm like, you know, in what fucking Matrix movie am I here, you know? Matrix 5, <laughs> the one that hasn't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I heard the last one was a was a real disaster, but uh, oh I man, I'm so annoyed about that. I haven't watched it yet. I still I still want to watch it because I mean it was such an influential movie. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the Clown World simulation has literally destroyed everything. Even even the remnants of the best movies ever fucking made. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. But um, I don't know. To 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 that last point, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know what I have to add to that, except that the the 
I don't know at what point it unravels. Um, I don't know because we're, we're definitely in uncharted territory, right? Like, y yes, there is echoes of the past. You know, there's echoes of Nazi Germany. There's echoes of the Stalinist uh, regime. There's echoes of all sorts of things um, from the past. But the the reality is that it's um it's quite a bit different this time and not not in a good way in, in a bad way um in, in the sense that it's um there's at least during the the stalinist regime there was a you know a force like a, at least some sort of legitimate force one could argue that was against it right like so you know the there was hitler and then there was the allies right you know, notwithstanding, you know, that the, the allies themselves were, you know, probably involved in some way. There was probably all sorts of weird shenanigans going on in the background anyway. But at least there was like this, you know, this uh, force in the opposite direction. Um, you know, at least, you know, the Americans in some way, shape or form, again, you know, whilst they probably were instrumental in creating the problem in the first place, at least, you know, there were American soldiers and American, you know, deployments and all this sort of stuff that were for freedom, right? And then people who were escaping Germany had a place to go. Um, we kind of don't have that at this point. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very different world where it's like the, the authorities, we're, we're against basically every single authority. There isn't a single so-called authority that is on our side. So we're, we're fundamentally um, having to to subvert and usurp uh, everything. Um, now, the good part of that is that we actually are building off a sound organic foundation that is natural, it's emergent, and it's not just one authority imposing its will on another, um, which is why we're here in the first place. But the downside is, um, is that it's going to be messier, um, it's going to be uglier, it's going to probably... I don't know, be more painful. Um, there's no, there's no textbook in how to deal with this. Um, I don't know, man. It's a, uh, it's going to be a strange, a very, very strange decade. And I mean, we're only what, two years in to this stupidity and it's already, I mean, it's already just so, laughable so stupid so ridiculous and I, I don't know i don't know what to think about 2022 <laughs> i honestly don't know what to expect or to think um and i guess to, to cap that you know thought off is like i don't know what how this thing um turns around i'm, I'm at a bit of a loss for words go on to my life so do you think something unexpected could happen in the next, like like sooner, much sooner than we could even anticipate in the next, let's say, couple of years, one or two years? Like, like something that's like? out of the blue, like something that we couldn't even like fathom, like, you know, maybe a new, like, I don't know, false flag or something, I don't know. or, or Like aliens? I don't know. Maybe that's the last Joker, you know, <laughs> because nothing works. You know, they come up with a fucking, you know, alien false flag, like alien invasion or something. You know, like. <laughs> well, isn't isn't that what they're talking about now? I it's, am telling you, they're. I think yeah. they're trying to condition. And they're trying yeah. to condition people's minds and fucking mind controlling people. They're starting to move the Overton window now, so they got like twenty four theologians together to basically think about what it would mean if we had uh, you know an alien it was like holy yeah, yeah. fucking shit and there's actually a testimony from uh Vernon from brown you know who was at nasa you know who the operation paper paperclip they you know, brought him to germany for listeners um just a background uh and and she, and he had an assistant and she said that uh before he died he he told her listen that's the last card the last joke or something like that you know uh, they're gonna pull it off, you know. <laughs> false flag alien mission. Anyway, I, don't, I just want to think about it. Let's, let's talk about solutions or something positive. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> so you know, I mean, El Salvador, sure, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, Bukele is a politician for me. I don't know, you know, I don't know what to think about these people. I mean, you know, I think he's got ethical principles. This is, I think, I think mentioned that some time ago. 
Um, I have the feeling the guy, of course, enjoys it, you know, to be celebrated on Twitter, you know, and, and it's sort of a vanity s stuff. But I think, do you think he, he's got like ethical principles, like beyond being a president of El Salvador and politician? And, and, you know, do we have a guarantee, like even if he sticks? No, on we, we don't have any guarantees. I think um, Kelly is a, uh, a political animal, as you said. Um, I think he's a I think he's an intelligent politician. Um, I think that he's doing basically what every single small scale nation state should do, um, which is uh, create options, um, create controversy and buck the trend. Um, so whether, um, whether you like him or not, um, doesn't really matter. Um, if I, if I was him, I would be playing the same fucking playbook. Um, and the thing is I would much prefer to have a contract with a dictator than a contract with a democracy, because at least with a dictator, you know who you're dealing with. Um, and, you know, if, if things go sour, you, you have one person to kill. Whereas a democracy is a hydra. You, there, there is nobody to, to kill or to finish off. So like p p part of this series, I'm going to go into this idea of like uh, libertarianism or a, um, or a hyper Bitcoinized world is basically a patchwork of uh, private dictatorships, um, small-scale dictatorships. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, you look at how a company functions. You know, it's effectively a dictatorship, and it's a dictatorship because it's functional. Um, and, you know, if you want to be an effective dictator and you want to make the most of your, your land, your resources, you'll want to, as best as possible, uh, adhere to the contracts that you create with your prospective customers, partners, or the people you deal with. Now, notwithstanding that fact, there will be some moron dictators who break contracts, who do all that sort of stuff and, you know, go on a press and everything, but they'll basically obsolete themselves into economic um, oblivion, right? Like they'll They'll, they'll wipe themselves off the map um, and they'll become dependent on someone who runs their little jurisdiction or their little territory well. So, so Bukele is just a very early incarnation of someone who is looking to hopefully rule over his land and beyond for a long time. And he's using the, the geopolitical um, and mind virus advantage that bitcoin represents to give himself um that precedence and in the next four years like assuming he just stays that course he will be extraordinarily powerful and by no means is he doing it to give a fuck about the people like honestly fuck the people anyway they're all sheep so who gives a fuck you know if he just does it for himself um, and he becomes a powerful dictator on a bitcoin standard for him to remain commercially viable um, and to maintain a territory that is commercially viable, he's going to want to maintain the integrity of the contracts he creates with the people he wants to do business with, which will most likely be Bitcoiners. So I don't see this as bad in any way, shape or form. I think it's all good. Um, I think it's all great. And it doesn't matter whether he's doing it for the good of the people or for the good of himself. Um, there is a net benefit there for uh, anyone who wants to deal with Bukele in a contractual manner. Um, and I think it's a safer con contract than dealing with the EU or the World Economic Forum or the World Bank or the US or the Five Eyes or any of these fucking retards. So, uh, yeah, so so uh, what um, the idea was, you know, free private cities, you know, because Peter Young was here, he was visiting us. He works also amongst uh, others for Safed and Amus and free private cities and some other organizations, I think, yeah, for increment, Incrementum or something. And he said, and I told him, I told him, you know, especially now, you know, with the pressure uh, mounting up, uh, there should be like a more accelerated process of developing uh, free private cities, you know, like, like, as you said, you know, it's a contractual service, you know, you, you pay a fee, whatever yearly fee per, per year, uh, you know, free private cities or citadel cities or Bitcoin city in El Salvador. I mean, you know, uh, I'm assuming he's going to pull it off, you know, with the volcano bonds, like sort of a financing mechanism where, 
he builds infrastructure that would be great you know so to build up that incentive incentivization game so people come investors come entrepreneurs come people with skills with, with talents you know people like you and 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 me and and you know and my girlfriend and she's got you know and so um and I, do you think do you think we will see like a accelerated hyper bitcoinized like localized what do you, what would you call it like circular economies local economies it's uh, the only way yeah it is the, the only way, way. Yeah, and there, that's the there, only way we can be protected, right? I mean, we can protect ourselves. That's the only way, you know? That's why El Salvador is like a serious option for us n next to like maybe Mexico or Paraguay. But other than that, you know, we don't have any guarantee anywhere else. Well, the thing is, that this is the, you know, the fortunate and unfortunate thing about life is there is no guarantees anywhere anyway, um, because, you know, th there's no guarantee in Salvador or Paraguay or Mexico either. Um, it doesn't take much for these um, centrally managed systems to kind of break apart and fall apart. Um, may, maybe the one guarantee that we have is, you know, gravity always prevails. Truth always prevails. So at some point um, along the clown world simulation timeline, the shit fall implodes on itself. The, the So that's a guarantee. Um the the thing that's not guaranteed is when right so so there's there's a good saying and i can't remember who said this but you know i can tell you what but i can't tell you when um or i can tell you when but i can't tell you what right so you know we know that this whole simulation is going to fall apart the lie will collapse you you can't continue to build on a foundation of fucking quicksand and you can put all the sticky tape and band-aids and shit you want all over it it's going to snap going to fall apart and implode on itself so the question is, is how long does that take and what do we do in the meantime in order to protect ourselves um, and to subsist and to last and to outlast the stupidity right and enclaves like what's happening in salvador are examples you know paraguay mexico costa rica etc there's, there's examples around um and th this is you know austin is another one miami is another one all that sort of stuff right you know, and, and this is where I think it's going to require uh, action, thinking, organization in a decentralized manner uh, by all of us, I guess. And that hasn't changed. That's the same discussion we had two years ago. Where would you see like uh, these kind of free private cities or, you know, Bitcoin cities, like hyper Bitcoin cities evolving or grow or, you know, or developing? Like, do you have any like, countries or cities uh where yeah, you have been the more like... broke the more broke the better okay mm -hmm. yeah the, the more broke the better because like i mean that's and that's not a that's not a um i think that's a there will be exceptions to that rule right but if a territory is bankrupt or broke and there's enough uh there's enough of a desire to avoid starvation by the people around. Um, there is an opportunity to present an alternative that people might want to take a bet on. Right. Um, you know, it's not, it's like, it's not going to happen in Australia, for example, no fucking chance in hell. It's not going to happen in Germany. It's not going to happen in Austria. It's not going to happen um, in Canada. Uh, it's not going to happen in England. Um, maybe parts of America, it may happen. So parts of America may be the exception to the rule because of the kind of uh, frontiersmen that so recently at least uh, moved into and colonized those regions, you know, like Texas and Florida being examples, right? Um, but in saying that, like to move, you know, th they, they may do it Th that dichotomy, so, so I'll give you an example. So at the individual level, you have a, a person in Africa or in Venezuela who doesn't want Bitcoin. They fucking need Bitcoin, right? Um, and then you have Michael Saylor who doesn't need Bitcoin, but he wants Bitcoin. So that's, that's a micro version of the macro, which is an El Salvador doesn't want Bitcoin. It fucking needs it. Um, and a Florida or a Texas doesn't need it, but if it's smart enough, it might want it um, and gain a jump. So, so there is, um, you know, there is 
some interesting tactical advantages and you know that that's actually i mean as i'm spitballing this and as i'm thinking about it this actually makes a whole lot of sense to me because it's like you look at the the macro version of a of a fucking moron leftist um is new york for example and they by far going to be the last you know jurisdiction or territory in the world to do anything with bitcoin <laughs> other than regulate the shit out of it to you know create protectionism for wall street um so so the upshot to that for us is that um they impoverish themselves and you know one day we buy wall street as a place to chuck a party right for you know january the 3rd every year so it's like yeah i, I think we want to you want to pick a place that either needs it or that has the highest degree or chance of capturing it from um a place of curiosity or you know strategic advantage um in basically the this the the diagram that i drew uh in the article in 2020 the um uh bitcoin and lockdowns right so it's like the 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 necessity moving bitcoin moving from a luxury to a necessity um if you can identify a location or a jurisdiction or a territory that wants the early competitive advantage or requires it as a necessity i think that's where we can sprout up do you see like after el salvador would you would you think that uh a number of smaller countries uh you know all of a sudden like one after the other start doing the same thing or you know or uh, like el salvador what like what what would be the factor that that triggers that you know this this process or that that would like totally like be on un, totally unexpected very similar to you know in a village of starving people you know one of them sees you know the other guy with bitcoin and he's either protecting his purchasing power or growing it um you know and the other guy's like fuck i better jump on this um and it's the same thing there and then a slightly different game theory takes hold with the floridas and texas of the world mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. texas sees florida making strides and like fuck they're gonna outcompete us so we want to outcompete them so they do something and they kind of drive each other forward so the the, the game th one is one is um to gain dominance and the other is to survive um but the game theory is um it's a it's a flavor of the same thing okay gotcha um so yeah i don't want to take too much time of you uh, alex um anything like what would you what would you say to the people out there uh besides you know stacking sets <laughs> uh, what what is like uh you know an optimistic realistic uh uh i don't know uh, advice that you can give people <laughs> run for your life <laughs> run for your life yeah <laughs> especially in australia because you mentioned australia i heard a guy in australia i think he's a lawyer actually he said uh when it comes to the children you know uh people i think uh, he thinks people are gonna rise up but you know i don't know it's just uh, uh, maybe you know people you know in australia they don't even have guns right i mean i think all the guns have been confiscated so they can't even defend themselves even if it's like total like you know uh uh i don't know concentration yeah. camps like <laughs> um hey, at least the australian concentration camps will have music they'll have free spotify um subscriptions <laughs> and some netflix what a luxury um <laughs> this is so fucking stupid um so look i mean words of wisdom or words of hope um at this point i have very little um i think people should obviously continue accumulating and acquiring as much bitcoin as possible they should continue figuring out ways in which they can store it and secure it um because as the parasites get more desperate they're going to want to get their hands on it so you want to you know figure that piece out make, make make your bitcoin untouchable um and make it so that if they do touch you that it's all gone um because then you know they have very little incentive they have nothing to take from you right um you know live frugally um you know show very little i think now's also the time where we should actually also probably start becoming more private so you and me should probably both cancel our podcasts and cancel everything else we're doing and you know start hiding more um 
So that's advice for me and you and for everyone else out there running a Bitcoin podcast. We should have gone anonymous from the beginning. I think a lot of people said that who are now yeah. cool name on there. But anyway. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Maybe, maybe we should just become shitcoiners um, <laughs> and then we can, you know, at least camouflage our thing there. You know, we, should, we should change our um, podcast to Discovering Ethereum. Um, oh, you would, oh, we would never do that. I think C CBDC maximalists. <laughs> um, that's what we need to become. So, I mean, look, I, honestly, now now's the time to to start figuring out ways and in, in which you have, you know, build build the back door basically, um, mm -hmm. so that if you do need to move and go quiet and everything, you have the capacity to do so. Um, I mean, I know my, as I said, my 2022 is going to change significantly um, from a, in, a, in a professional capacity. So I hope to, you know, recede from the, um, from, from the commercial sort of sphere and space and do more in a, um, I don't know, use the pen more um, because I know that, I can do a lot of damage with writing at least. Um, so I will, I will look to continue doing that. Um, and what else can I say? I mean, you know, the, the, there's a whole host of other skills that people should be thinking about, like, um, you know, gardening and, you know, self-defense and looking after your health and maintaining some form of sanity, um, you know, meditating, reading a lot, like all of these things that people should have been doing anyway before um, before the clown world simulation sort of went into overdrive. Like they're things that we should be doubling down on now. Um, and also actually another one is probably just continuing to resist and making the lives of the enforcers difficult. So like what I was doing in the gym the other day, which is, I mean, I could have worn the mask underneath my chin. And in some cases, you know, the argument, like what my girlfriend said, she's like, why, why are you causing yourself issues for no reason? I mean, fuck them. If I don't cause them, like, I, I want to make their lives painful and difficult. Um, and the more of us that make their lives painful and difficult, you know, maybe they'll realize how fucking worthless and pathetic they are. Maybe, may, maybe not. Yeah, you know, and maybe you're, you know, more and Alex, you know, you're uh, you're transparent and, and honest. You know, I think there's very, very few p people who tell people in their face, you know, <laughs> what the reality is. You know, like I think people need that, especially nowadays. You know, mm -hmm. because they're under mass psychosis. Maybe people need that. You know, just to wake up. I don't know. There's because who? I mean. You know, they're all sheep. You know, people just 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 succumb and do you know do whatever they're told. So this is maybe uh, actually yeah, it is. I think a good thing that you're doing because you're standing Thank up you. to your principle. You know, to your sacrosanct principle. Yeah, that that's that's something I just can't seem to um to avoid. I don't know, like um you know, so so many people think that yeah, look, I agree with you, but you know, I just don't want to be bothered. Um, and I, and I honestly think that's the wrong attitude. I honestly think that, well, if you can't be bothered, then when, when are you going to be bothered when, when you're being pushed into the gulag, like, is that when you're going to be bothered? Like, or, or when they maybe, you know, inject your fucking kids, like, do, do you want to be bothered when it's too late? You dumb motherfucker. Like now's the time to be bothered. Mm -hmm. Um, not before, like it was the time to be bothered in March of 2020 when, you know, people like me or Francis or Saifedean got up and said, what the fuck is wrong with you people? This mm -hmm. is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, and people were like, oh, you know, relax. You're being extreme, blah, 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 blah. Now, two years fucking later, oh, yeah, you know, maybe you were right. But look, it's not that bad yet, you know, so I can't still be bothered, you know, standing up for myself. It's like, and, and this is why, like, in many, in many ways, like the gulags and the Holocaust, you know, we might think that it was um, extreme now. But back then, I mean, I think these people were basically voluntarily walking into the fucking camps and onto the trains mm -hmm. because step by step it became normal. Um, and they basically were never bothered to say no. Um, and it's, it's really fucking frustrating for me. It's like, how can you be so fucking weak and pathetic that you, you prefer to fucking live a lie like fuck is wrong with you man like fuck off 
Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's um, that's enough of my ranting. I think. Read, buy Bitcoin, meditate, keep calm, make the lives of the lemmings difficult, laugh at them, ridicule them, um, keep pointing out the stupidities, have a backup plan, create your back door, build other skills, build networks. Like that's that's the job for 2022, man. Would you would you recommend or do do you see like any places or regions or I don't know countries where you would see in the next let's say ten years like conservatively where people would just emigrate or you know move to is there like other regions? Bal Bal Balkan regions okay so um, not just in Europe but in mm -hmm. Central America is like um, and even the Caucasus like they're all balkanized regions because they're basically what you want to do is you want to be in places where there's um there's some sort of fragmentation and, and this is where the united states is kind of like an anomaly is because it is the united states but because the states have enough autonomy right. they are also balkanized so 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 balkanization is what you want to look for um so then you have some sort of optionality and then it's up to you to take you know try and figure out whether you want um uh advanced um or like um affluent balkans mm -hmm. Um, like the U.S. states, or you want um, non-affluent Balkans, mm -hmm. um, and whether you want, you know, the sat, uh, South American, Latin American culture, or whether you want more of the European culture. Mm -hmm. They both have their pros and cons. They're both fucking retarded, and they're both beautiful in, in their own ways. Um, so the question is, like, which flavor of retard, which flavor of beautiful do you really want? Um, and that's, you know, up to everyone's personal preference at this point. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, man, um, as I told you, you know, I think if you already talked off the record that you're going to start um, writing a book because, you know, I told you, write a book. I, I can't wait, you know, once your book comes out, I think it's going to be a blast. Um, it's going to be a bestseller, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, no, because it's so dense, everything that you write. Um, so where can people find you? And uh, 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 besides medium.com, you are on Bitcoin Magazine, your articles anywhere else or what are we looking forward to yeah so so basically i do all of my blogging now on bitcoin magazine and then later on i just move it onto my my old blog there's the bitcoin times actually which mm -hmm. uh that'll be out this week the edition four um which cool. is gonna be i i think it's my most the piece that i wrote in there it's my longest piece ever um but i think it's also my most hopeful big brain, big picture view of Bitcoin. So it's called fire Bitcoin teleportation. And it talks about this idea of, um, you know, the, the timeline of humanity basically being BB and AB. So before Bitcoin and after Bitcoin. Um, and it talks about how Bitcoin is as important as fire in terms of, um, uh the evolution of humanity as a species so i think it's a it's extraordinarily important piece um the piece from um brandon quidam in there is also fucking amazing it's about pioneer species and how bitcoin mining represents a way for uh society to evolve to to form around uh bitcoin mining in places where uh we were unable to capture or harness um or it was uneconomical to capture or harness energy so so some really really good stuff in there like alan farrington's in there um thomas Strelat's in there peter sanongi and craig warmke oh both, great um yeah. yeah philosophers so yeah it's it's gonna be a really killer piece so bitcoin times um dot news is the is the website where people can get all the pdfs for free um and then next year i'm actually going to start publishing them um they will be limited edition prints like high quality prints um sure. and there will be 2100 of each edition and i think i'm gonna do 21 editions in total so and if i do one a year that means this project's gonna last another you know 16 years or whatever um 16 17 years so it's like a it's like a low time preference thing but something that i want to basically document and yeah think deeply and write deeply about the ramifications of bitcoin in the world and on the world over the next couple of decades so is that um and then obviously the podcast wake up so yeah um, that's uh i'm going to be putting more time into that in the new Can year i well. recommend it are you going to talk to Kathleen austin fitz right some sometime in january 
Yes. Uh, I can't wait Dalton for that Baller one. Because, you know, I think you yeah. need to orange peel her. I think she just... Uh, there's a few people who are so... Not only influential, but they've, they've got like a huge comprehension of, of the things going... Because she's a whistleblower, actually. She's an insider. And and she knows, you know, how many trillions have been siphoned off, you know, into the military industrial complex. It's a lot of subjects and topics which have been following her for a long time. So if if you and, and I really want to understand why she thinks I don't know what she thinks about Bitcoin, to be honest, I, I still didn't get it. Is it because she thinks whatever it's sort of a, you know, NSA, <laughs> you know, CIA stuff? I think it's goes in, it's going to go into this. Story. But, you know, let, you know. Let's let's get surprised. I don't know. Maybe maybe she'll surprise us with some kind of enlightenment. Uh, but she's she's awesome. You know, if you can orange pill her, you know, then uh, it's gonna be a huge That's audience. My plan. Yeah. That's my plan. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Alex, thanks so much again, and uh, hopefully talk to you soon and see you soon in person. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you so much. Love All the right. conversations. Ciao. All right, so what I want to um, add, uh, it was an amazing talk with Alex Svetsky, always you know, a blast with him. Um, make sure you follow him on Twitter. Uh, I think he's got two Twitter handles, uh, but one of them is uh, uh, Ghost of Svetsky. And uh, you can also find him on BitcoinMagazine.com, his articles, and then Svetsky.medium.com and all the other links I'm just going to uh, put in the show notes. And yeah, as, as, as also said, you know, take care of your Bitcoin, meaning, you know, not your keys, not your coins. Take them off your exchange if you're a newbie, a noob, uh, stack sats, you know, accumulate uh, small amounts, whatever it is continuously. Don't look at the price. It's just, it just meaningless. Think in purchasing power in the magnitude and power of purchasing power of Bitcoin in the, in the months and years to come. And um, yeah, and you're good to go. And just, you know, just uh, have some kind of exit plan, whatever that is, especially if you're in Australia and Aust or Austria and Europe, in European Union, in this shithole, just uh, be prepared. Uh, and uh, I have em total empathy with you if you have, like us, you know, if you have children, um, you got to plan ahead and, uh, you know, pick a country, pick a region, pick something, you know, uh, build up a network, uh, find people, you know, whom you share the same values, uh, whether it be Bitcoiners or libertarians or whatever, but especially Bitcoiners. Um, and, you know, and I think it's going to, you know, it's going to evolve much faster now because the pressure is on and uh, there will be more investors, entrepreneurs, people want to, you know, move out uh, of the country and, uh, have a free you know, live in a free private cities have a contract maybe with a service provider and you know live in freedom you know and with ethos and uh, with joy and pleasure and um, and thrive anyway my name is Kevin Navani I'm the host of the Kevin Navani connection show and let me know any suggestions questions you have for future um, talks interviews I should do and thanks so much again and follow me on Twitter and I'll see you soon. Bye.